My guest today is Jay Harris. Jay, how long has it been? It's been a few you've years. Been on my show. Been on several times. You were but on it's a been bunch, a few years. and then back I don't in the know beginning, what happened. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I think you moved to Chicago. That's probably a factor. It made it harder for us <laughs> to do that. <laughs> well, we're here now, and you're moving to Las Vegas. I am. I'm moving to Las Vegas <laughs> in two days. Tomorrow, two days. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's seize the day. Nice. Let's do it. Um, we were talking earlier about web development because you're a web developer. I am a web so developer. You do a lot of that stuff here. Right. And I used to be a, a web developer. I used to do that like all day, every day. Right. I would open up. My workflow was I would log in and um, browse the web for a little while. <laughs> but then when I went to work, I would open up Visual Studio. Mm-hmm. And that sucker would stay open Forever. all day yep. long. File new project. I would open it up, and I would do my editing in there, and I would do my uh, HTML in there, and my background code in there, and even sometimes my database code in there. Sure. You don't work that way at all. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, and certainly recognize that you can, and mm-hmm. that works great for a lot of people because Visual Studio can do so many things, mm-hmm. even beyond just for editing your HTML and your CSS or building out your .NET C Sharp or VB oh, to yeah. managing your database. It can... You know, deploy to your web server, deploy to Azure. It can manage your Azure instances. Mm-hmm. I, I, my, my favorite element about Visual Studio is how it can take your, your classes, your, your C-sharp code, convert it into a UML diagram, and uh-huh. then you can take the UML diagram and convert it back into C-sharp classes again. <laughs> Just to test to see if it's the it same It does thing. so many things. Yeah. Um, and so for us, and that's uh, what's wrong with that. Why? Why do you not stick with that? Um, I don't just because it, it's not my preferred uh, workflow. Uh, for for me, uh, I break out uh, a lot of that development into uh, individual tools. Um, many of those tools are are much more. I guess best of breed of their particular task, but they're they're great at doing this one task, but that's the only thing that they can do, or at least the only thing that they can do very well. Okay. Um, Visual Studio is a great tool, but it's a much more of a generalist yeah. uh, tool because it can do everything, and it does a great job of doing everything, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's not necessarily the top tool of of those things. Plus. Of course, they say that, how do you know if a developer is a Vim developer? Wait five minutes and they'll tell you. <laughs> it hasn't been five minutes yet. I'm a Vim developer, <laughs> and the Vim plugins for Visual Studio just aren't the same as using actual Vim. Uh, so people that actually can write code using Vim have superpowers. We, maybe. We do have. <laughs> I, I, I don't change my clothes in a phone booth. but. <laughs> Uh, so you like Vim as your editor of choice. You yes. Like, you know the shortcut keys. and then, uh, Right, absolutely. Uh, it's just uh, it, those are the, the, the chords and the shortcut keys and the sequences are what my mem- muscle memory is is used to. Um, sort of like uh, I also predominantly use uh, Mac OS. Huh. And the shortcut keys are just different in Mac OS. It's yeah, Command C to copy to the clipboard sure. on Mac and Control C for Windows. Uh-huh. If I use a Windows machine, uh, the command key is where the Windows key is, uh-huh. and Windows key or Windows C just doesn't work quite the same for I getting understand. information to the clipboard. I've been I've been stuck with that as I switch back and forth between the two. It's, it's yeah. a challenge. Um, so what is? Or do you use Visual Studio at all? I do and, use Visual uh, Studio on um, Windows at all. Uh, for the most part, I'm using other tools when it's client side uh, web development. Of course, I am almost exclusively a web developer. Uh, I occasionally will write a mobile application. I don't think I have ever written a Windows desktop application, Hmm. uh, at least not uh, with serious intent. Hmm. Uh, So from a web perspective, all of my web work is outside of Visual Studio. And my .NET work, uh, I do inside of Visual Studio. I mean, Visual Studio is still the best tool for writing C Sharp. So these are the web services that your uh, your your HTML and your JavaScript are going to call. That's what you're writing in .NET. Right. Okay. Right. So MVC and Web API down. If I'm inside of a controller, you know, all the way down into integrating with the database, mm-hmm. um, I'm not using Visual Studio for writing my stored procedures, mm-hmm. um, but everything. Uh, uh, yes, from you can. You can, <laughs> uh, but everything from uh, f- right from those MVC and Web API controllers on down through what calls those stored procedures. All yeah. of the C sharp code is written in Visual Studio. And what are you what tools are you using for your client side work? Uh, for my client side work it's it's all Vim uh, plus uh, either a mixture of uh, Webpack or Gulp.js, depending those on the prog- are, uh, project. Those are basically build tools. Right, those are, are build tools for taking my TypeScript and turning it into JavaScript because 
the browsers. They don't know TypeScript, mm-hmm. so it's got to be JavaScript by the time it's going across the wire to the browsers. Mm-hmm. Or taking my uh, SAS uh, style sheets and turning them into CSS right. style sheets. All of minimizing my code, bundling my files together, all of that stuff that goes into making the client-side aspects of a website production-ready, browser-ready, those will be in, in, in Gulp or in Webpack. Okay. What else do you use? What else do I use? Um, well, as I say, I use uh, Official Studio for all of the C Sharp on stuff. The, on the I'm using. Uh, oh, what else do I use on the client side? Uh, mostly, it's just then plugins uh, that that tie into um, uh, into Webpack or Gulp.js, like uh, Babel or various image minimizers and bundling plugins. Ah. Um, they're just more npm libraries, more things mm-hmm. that I download from NPS, install from npm. Um, more tools that I'll install from NPM to to make these build tools do their thing. Are you if you're working on a team, do um, do your teammates have to use these same tools? No, or? and that's the great thing about it uh, from my perspective. Is so if you go into uh, uh, on Auto Shop, um, they're going to have wrenches inside of their toolbox. Mm-hmm. No one cares what the brand is on that wrench. If it's as long as they have a half inch wrench, then great. As long as it works and it doesn't break when they're twisting bolts. Um, so to me, I, I'm not really a fan of, of locking down developers to specific operating systems and to specific tools uh, because, of course, I, my muscle memory is used to those Vim commands. Right. Uh, and if you're not a Vim developer, you're going to look at Vim and cross-eyed wondering how sure. to get into edit mode or how to get out of edit mode. And for me, if I'm sitting down in an IDE at any editor that's not in Vim mode, I'm going to start typing Vim commands <laughs> and these weird characters are going to start popping into the screen because it doesn't know that they're Vim commands. It just thinks that I want to type in colon Q. But I, I, I've noticed that um, I get annoyed when people use the word intuitive. This interface, this tool is more intuitive than that one. And usually what they mean is it's more used, it's more like what I'm used to. Right. It's muscle memory. Muscle, Absolutely. muscle memory is a good way of doing that. Absolutely. Uh, and really, I think um, this is a, a direction as a whole that, that Microsoft is heading anyway. Yeah, I think so. Uh, especially with uh, done at Core and with ASP.NET Core, these are now cross-platform tools, and there's no Visual Studio for Linux. They've released a, they've released a Visual Studio for Mac. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as right. Visual Studio for Windows. There certainly is no Visual Studio for Linux, but uh, done at Core and uh, ASP.NET Core will certainly work on Linux just fine. You can be uh, a Linux guru and writing against these applications. You're not going to be using Visual Studio to do it. So uh, Microsoft understands and endorses a world where using the platform does not need to be tightly coupled to using the tooling. I'll tell you one of the reasons that I liked the days when I would open up Visual Studio and just stay in there is these are decisions I didn't have to make. There was an editor there. There's a tool in there already for doing uh, minification, and I can get it set to do TypeScript. Probably. I didn't have to think about which editor to use, which uh, bundler to use, and so on. Sure. Um, how, how do you go about choosing what the best tools are? Uh, for, for, uh, for me, I was just kind of forced into it. Uh, for being a, uh, a software consultant, mm. and all of our clients aren't necessarily Microsoft stack uh-huh. clients. Uh, sometimes it's an application that's built in, built entirely in Node.js. Sometimes it might be an application that's built on Ruby. And these aren't uh, frameworks that are going to work great with Microsoft tooling. I see. These non-Microsoft platforms aren't going to work okay. seamlessly with Microsoft tooling. So sort of forced into exploring what the uh, other options are. So your client's environments force you to start thinking about that. And then, right. and then what, you just started trying them and right. saying, this is... Uh, this is the editor for me. This is the bundle. Prior to this going is. off on my own, when I was just working for some Microsoft shop uh-huh. somewhere, I worked I was with you one time. On right, we worked together, <laughs> and it was the same way. I'd open Visual Studio, uh-huh. and it would Visual Studio would be open all day long, and then I would never leave it. Yeah. But uh, having to to certainly get into some of these other frameworks have forced me to explore these other tools. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I agree that's what Microsoft uh, is doing. I think Visual Studio Code is a big example of that, which is cross-platform and uh, kind of uh, it's very lightweight and more plug-in friendly as right. opposed to uh, Visual Studio, which is everything is in the box. It's, it's Absolutely. Well, there's also there's another tool uh, called OmniSharp. Uh, it's an open source tool. Okay. Uh, it's listed on GitHub, and the primary contributors are a sea of who's who at Microsoft. I mean, there are mm-hmm. other contributors as well, but there are a lot of who's who at Microsoft that are core contributors to OmniSharp. What OmniSharp is, is a tool that gives uh, .NET-based IntelliSense to other tools that aren't Visual Studio. So oh, it gives IntelliSense to to Vim, to Emacs, to Sublime, oh. to Brackets, to so many of these other non-Microsoft IDEs, right. but still giving that IntelliSense experience that many .NET developers know and love from yeah. Visual Studio and bringing it outside of, of the Visual Studio window. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't know. We talked about a lot. <laughs> uh, where are you speaking next? Uh, where am I speaking next? Um, so taking a little bit off for the relocation to uh, to Nevada, to Las Vegas. Um, my Next on my docket is uh, GiveCamp. So uh, I am president of the national organization. Took over a little bit ago from I Chris Koenig. Wow. Um, but uh, so where's the when is the next gift camp? Uh, well, the where? next one that uh, I manage is Ann Arbor. Uh, okay. I've been uh, running Ann Arbor Gift Camp for I think this will be my fifth year as mm-hmm. as lead organizer for Ann Arbor Gift Camp. So that's coming up th- the third weekend in September, uh, the fifteenth through the seventeenth uh, in September. Uh, and then from then, uh, uh, my next set is a few talks in the Ohio User Group Tour. Ah, you're going back October. to the Midwest. Heading back to the Midwest. Yep. <laughs> It'll be fun. I knew you couldn't stay away. You couldn't stay away. Jay, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Though I've been living in the Detroit area for the last 11 years and I'm moving to Las Vegas, Nevada, I will now be 2,000 miles away from uh, many of my closest friends. But I'm fortunate that the modern technology of today, they're still just a touch away.